today's project, I'm going to work on the um, gas gauge of this uh, 1997 Sea-Doo uh, GTX. So I'm going to go ahead and put in the key onto the post and show you that the uh, speedometer and information system is still working, but the gas gauge is non-existent. It's not even coming on. So you can see uh, things are working there, but zero on the gas gauge. Um, so I'm going to get going. And the way to access that uh, is under this thing right here. So I'm going to go ahead and plug this key and get going with it. So <clears throat> the way to do that, there are four of these things right here. And all you have to do is pry that open. Uh, and uh, I'm going to show you how to get going on at least one of them. What you got to do, I'm going to show you one of them on how to take it off. All you have to do is I have this ice pick and I just pry this thing and there you go. And this whole thing comes off. As you can see, that's the front of the jet ski. I went ahead and removed the uh, storage console. And if you go look inside, you will see that there's four hoses right there. One, two, three, four. Um, if you still have the gray tempo line, this is the best time to replace them. Um, as you know, the gray tempo lines will clog up your entire fuel system. So, but for this project, as you can see, I already replaced them. Um, and where these four hoses are attached to is actually your fuel sending unit and the most likely culprit for uh, the reason why your um, gas gauge is not working. Um, and all you need to do is identify all the hoses before pulling them out. And it's just a clamp. Um, and so you could pull them out one at a time, but make sure that you identify them uh, by either clockwise, make sure that the very top one, this one right here, mark it one. And again, that's the front of the jet ski. And of course, the one on the right of it, uh, think of it as a clock again, mark that number two. And the one at the bottom would be number three, and this would be number four. Make sure you put a uh, masking tape uh, right there um, and identify them again uh, so you could put it uh, back uh, properly. So um, pull out the, the sending unit, the fuel sending unit, and again, the likelihood of your gas gauge problem lies in there. Okay, the way to take this off, not sure if you can see it there, uh, there's two clamps. One right here, uh, and of course one on below. What you need to do is just do the one below. Uh, this one, you don't need to loosen it up. Uh, this thing right here, you do not need to loosen up. But the one below right here, you do need to loosen that up so you can just twist this off. It's not threaded or anything, you could just yank it off. Uh, but of course, uh, twisting it counterclockwise help. And here's all of the uh, clamps for the hose. Make sure that you identify all your hoses. Uh, one, two, three, four. Uh, and again, mark number one. Doesn't matter how you mark them, but as long as you put them back correctly, you'll be in good shape. Okay, here's the uh, fuel sending unit. Um, took it out of my 1997 Sea-Doo uh, GTX. And um, I could tell you, before you get started troubleshooting um, with this uh, uh, sending unit, there's a few things that you could probably do before taking it out. And actually, I should have done it first. Um, you need to start with some easy that will not cost you anything, uh, a easy fix. So the first thing you actually need to do while it's still on a jet ski, check your wires. Make sure that it's not frayed, it's not broken. And maybe sometimes, if you are really lucky, maybe someone just probably unplugged it. And therefore, that's the reason why your uh, fuel gauge is no longer working. So check for corrosion, check for things, something easy. Um, and, uh, you know, and maybe it'll get you going right away. So, um, before I even dismantle this thing or operate on this thing, um, 
I'm going to go ahead and, and, and test it with an ohm meter and see if I get any sort of reading. But I have a feeling it's actually my F1 fuse. So anyway, uh, just for starters, get an easy fix, check your wires, check for corrosion, check for frayed wires and so on. So if that's not the issue, the other thing that probably causing your um, gas gauge to not work is the float itself. Maybe it's full of fuel. Um, maybe it's actually, you know, um, you know, it's no longer floating. Um, I actually, you know, this, this uh, sending unit has been sitting a couple of days, but um, I already actually dissected it, checked the, the, the float, make sure it's not full of fuel, um, and uh, go from there. So just for the sake of this video, I'm going to go through it again uh, just to show you guys what needs to be done to correct your uh, non-working fuel gauge. So start with the easy fix, check your wires and so on. Next, check your floats, make sure it's not full of fuel and it's no longer floating. Uh, the third thing that you need to check, of course, the magnets. Um, maybe it's no longer uh, attached to the float itself, so that's why you're not getting any reading. Uh, in most cases, it's probably at the bottom, right here, just sitting at the bottom of this cap. Um, and sometimes this entire cap is actually off the sending unit and the magnets are actually at the bottom of your fuel tank. Um, that could be the cause. Let me add a little bit of light in here. There you go. Um, and that could be the cause of uh, your non-working fuel gauge. So that could be the, the, the cause. And finally, the third and final thing that, and again, as I mentioned going into this, I have a feeling it's my F1 fuse. But that fuse is, uh, if you're curious, it's 250 milliamps or a quarter of one amp. Um, I have a feeling that's what's broken, but I'm going to go through the troubleshooting to help you guys out um, repair your fuel gauge. So as I mentioned, uh, before I pu pull this uh, sending unit out, um, you need to identify one of them. So when I was pulling the hoses out um, and those hoses, those black hoses, um, I tagged them with a the masking tape with number one, number two, number three, and number four. And on the rubber, or at least identify at least one of these tubes um, for something. So I could tell you I put a masking tape, um, and I know that also on the rubber part of this, also put a masking or you know duct tape rather to identify how to line this back up. Um, I, I'm, as I mentioned, this is my number three. So when I'm putting my hose back, you don't have to tape all of them. You just need to identify one. So when you're putting it back, you're putting it back correctly. So one, two, three, and four. Or some people, you know, it's up to you if you want to do north, uh, east, uh, south, and west. It's up to you how you want to tag them as long as you put your hoses correctly. Um, anyway, let me go ahead and start with the reading. I've done this as well already, so um, I could probably, so let me pull my ohm meter right here. Um, and the wires, uh, there's a, a pink with black, so that's your negative. Slide it in there. And um, the just a solid pink is your positive. Uh, I could tell you it's probably not going to give me any reading. Um, it should have given me a reading already. So the float is at the bottom. Uh, and if I slide this, and of course put it upside down, you'll hear the float hit the top of this uh, fuel sending unit. Let me slide it. There it is. No reading. No reading. Not even a reading. So I have a strong feeling it's the F1 fuse. Uh, but let me go ahead and open it up and to show you um, this um, this float. Um, to open it up, it's rather easy. Um, as you can see right there, I'm not sure if you could see it, uh, there's a little hole in there and it's like a retaining clip. You just push that, push that out, see how easy it came out and just pop it up. And there you go right and typically if you see a magnet at the bottom or a magnet just falling out then you know uh, you're lucky consider yourself lucky and that's the reason why uh, your um, fuel gauge is not working because that magnet has come off but um, I have feeling it's not and by the way the likelihood of the magnet falling out with this design of float um, is not because it's actually 
on the tube. Let me show you the tubes. And the way it's designed, you could tell. Can you tell me which one is your reserve tube uh, fuel? Uh, and also for the regular. Uh, so as you can see, there's a little cut like halfway. And that is your regular source of fuel. And that's why it's no longer going to create that vacuum to suck the, the uh, fuel up to the tube. And that's why it will stop working. And this one gives you about yay much of fuel to get you back to the shore. Um, or to get you back to land and uh, go from there. But um, the likelihood of it, the magnets falling with this design of float is very unlikely. And if you could see inside, there's a bunch of circuits in there. And that's where actually the magnet serves as, uh, if you will, an activator. It goes up and down and uh, once it touches that circuit boards in there, it offers resistance. Uh, again, it goes up and down. Uh, to those circuitry and depending on the reading it will give you full uh, or empty uh, middle or half a tank and full so that's how it works and at the very top of this circuitry uh, that circuitry uh, there's that F1 fuse which is about located right here okay so I'm gonna operate on this as you can see my um, my float is actually okay I did tell you I took it out um, before creating this video just to make sure once I've taken it out that it's not full of fuel, it's no longer working. The magnets attached, so that's not the problem. I know the magnets is still attached or the magnets are still attached, so that's not the problem. Uh, and, 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 you know, as I mentioned, um, you know, it, it doesn't have any fuel inside, so it's still floating. So I know my problem going in would be my F1 fuse. Um, I've seen some fuse uh, or float design before where it's actually just notched right there and and it's a push in and those are the ones that actually fall have fallen in the past and you'll find it at the at the bottom of your gas tank and you have to fish it out with another um, uh, powerful magnet or uh, if I were you I just buy another one uh, that comes with a magnet, um, brand new magnets, and the attachment's still there. And at least it's guaranteed it's going to float. So, um, so this is okay. Um, and I'm going to clean this up with a uh, carburetor cleaner. Bunch of gunk in there. So I'm going to operate on this and go from there. So, um, the, so in order for me to operate on this, I have to get this rubber um, boot off and um and probably the best way to do that probably gonna go put some um grease right there and from here don't try to push it that side uh you'll probably break that wire so what i'm gonna do is put some grease right here put some grease right here opposite of where this at and i'm gonna push this up and that's how you take this rubber off but i'm gonna see it's already coming off so as soon as you push that out um, you, you know the, the the likelihood of this two cables right here getting damaged uh, just be careful you don't want to damage that um, and get going from there so um, I'm gonna go ahead and grab some grease and then push this out here's that other type of um, float and where with the snap-in uh, magnet so uh, this actually came from my buddy's jet ski uh, the one I fixed initially, but unfortunately I did not uh, do a video on it. But as you can see, it actually had a hole in it, so I patched it. And uh, I still didn't trust it, so we ended up buying one. But I thought I'd show you this design of float. So, there you go. Yeah, I just gre I'll go ahead and just grease this up. There's a notch there uh, that's the only one uh, that has a notch and it looked like the center of the board and notice the board the circuitry board has a notch as well so I may not be always the case but at least I know that there's a line there and I'm gonna operate 
just right there. I'm going to go ahead and cut that. Cut right here. So I could see that circuit, circuitry. I'm going to use a hacksaw. That's it. Adjust this camera. And go from there. I'm just going to cut right about there to get access to it. Don't cut too deep. Uh, you may hit the tube. So make sure that you're looking right there. I'm going to go ahead and take a look one more time. And I'm just going to go cut it right there. Get a hacksaw. And there, there's the notch. There's my line. Make sure I'm not cutting through the board. I know I haven't gone that deep. You can use a Dremel as well, but I'll leave that up to you. Like I cut deep enough. I just need access to that. So, now the tricky part, probably use a Dremel and go from there, but I'm going to make sure I cut it deeper. Good. That's a good cut. All right. We'll see. I'll put you guys on pause. Get my other tool. Um, this is actually my second time doing it. The first uh, sending unit that I did for my buddy, um, the F1 fuse is right there. So I'm actually going to go ahead and, and cut this as well. Uh, the F1 fuse is just right behind here. So I'm going to go ahead and cut that as well. There you go. The uh, F1 fuse is just right there. That black thing. Let's see if I could uh, get that disconnected. I'm not sure if you, this thing will focus. There's that fuse. 250 milliamps. So what I'm going to do is actually uh, cut it at the bottom and uh, connect them both. So more cutting. A little unexpected uh, location. Completely different than what I did for my uh, buddy's uh, Sidu. Okay, for this sending unit, unlike what I uh, did for my buddy a while back, it's on this side. Um, I popped this open uh, just to pull out the, uh, the F1 fuse from right there. And typically, the location of the F1 fuse is on this side. On, but on this case, it's actually above. Let me show you what it looks like. It's this one right here. And I just yanked it with a long nose. Um, and what I'm going to do is solder that two soldering points right there, if you could see it. Just right there. So I'm going to go ahead and solder that and uh, go from there. I'm Shed a light right there. See this two contact points right there? That's what you need to bridge with a soldering, um, soldering iron this two right here and um, a typical location for the F1 and I wish I've used my uh, video snake and you, I would have found out that the, um, the F1 fuse is not here but typically it's on this side and this is where you need to cut them um, I already did this is my second one and I'm just videotaping it and this one is actually where the fuse came in see right there I had to cut that open to pull this out and I'm not sure if you could see this and focus on that but it's just 250 um, milli uh, 250 milliamps uh, fuse and again this is blown so that's why I have to uh, put this 
I pulled it out with a long nose and then from there on this side I just need to solder this two points right here. I'm not an excellent soldering person so I'm not gonna bore you with that but I'm gonna take a video of the finished product. Okay, hang tight. Yeah, I'm gonna do my best to uh, put this on video. Okay, here we go, finished product. See that thing right there? I just soldered it. Um, this thing you don't have to do. I'm just curious what's up there. So I just gotta go put this back on. And uh, this thing right here, solder it up together and I should be good to go. All right, I'll let you know how it goes. Here's a tool of the trade. In order to put it back the way um, it was, um, just put this plastic back on and there you go. This is good. Okay. Patch it up. Okay. All put together, sealed up, a little rough, but that's okay. All you got to do now is just sand it, and I'm going to use that uh, grinder of mine right there. Here's the uh, thing all patched up, so um, it's a little rough, as you can see, and what I'm going to do is just uh, grind it up a little bit with this grinder. To smooth up or you could actually sand it whatever you want to do uh, many ways to slice the bread but I'm gonna do it this way to smooth it up okay I used up this grinder smoothed it out a little bit I think it's a lot cleaner um, and uh, all I gotta do is uh, put back this uh, boot and um, slide it back into the gas tank and uh, wish me luck hopefully uh, things all worked out and I get a uh, gas reading okay I want to show you this um, if you have an OCD like me um, as I mentioned that um, the F1 fuse that came with the um, fuel uh, sending unit is actually the, the thing I removed um, is actually a 250 milliamps uh, fuse or a quarter of one amps or one amp and um, and you know you don't have to do this uh, but um, I thought I'd do it and to protect it. it must be a reason that the engineers or the uh, developer of the CDU decided to put that 250 milliamps so again it's just my OCD you don't have to do this uh, but I found the uh, fuse at eBay. It's 250 milliamps and I just used a it's a mini one So this is a mini fuse uh, holder and I just added um, To protect it from water. This is a liquid electrical tape So I'm gonna go ahead and plug it in moment of truth. Hopefully I get a gas gauge So I'll put together We are good to go Okay, everything put away, tucked in, plugged in, and uh, moment of truth, see how many bars of gas uh, I got. Hopefully I can see it. There you go, gas gauge working, and it looks like I have three bars or so, or sort. Nope, how many bars is that? Just two, but hey, it's there. It's working. Success. So good luck with your project. And uh, go from there. There you go. Better light. Good luck, you guys. Thanks for watching.